Hi folks, my name is Mark Warnke and welcome to my channel, I Can Do That. So, a little bit about myself. Basically, I have no formal training in any uh, building, anything like that. Sitting outside of my house right now, which I've been trying to renovate room by room with absolutely zero experience. So, let's take a look inside and I will uh, explain a few things as I go. Number one, I'm probably going to upset a few of the, uh, few of the um, experts out there because I do things, well, my way because I don't know what I'm doing. So, as you look right here, I had to put plumbing in because I tore out my bathtub. Starting out with the kitchen here, it's a mess right now because I've been doing the bathroom. So, put new crown row molding up and these used to be just a piece of plywood when I moved in so I put this trim up here and put these handles up here and uh, repainted the kitchen painted the wains coating because it was so dark and dingy in here and I did yay backsplash all glass um, never did that before either so I bought a wet saw um, right now I'm doing my bathroom we'll get into the living room later um, a few things. One, when you're doing your bathroom, make sure that you get the right size drywall. When I went and got the drywall green board, um, I got half inch. Should have got three quarter inch, make it a little bit thicker, a little more soundproof. Um, so, as you look here, made a mistake, got too thin of a board. The other thing is, get yourself some proper tools. Number one, I... Uh, let me flip this around. You don't need to be seeing my face all the time here. I'm not sure how to flip it around. Huh. Anyway. All right. So I got these uh, pans. Nice plastic. Got a little metal uh, piece along the edge there, if you can see that. And don't get the plastic. What I found out is when I get the scrapers going, and I got a couple different sizes. I'll show them to you. So what I did is I got a uh, little three inch suggestion, get a four, three inches too small, it helps scoop out of the bucket, but, and then I got this, uh, I think this is a six, and then I got a ten. Um, a couple things, one, you, you really don't need the three different sizes, it just does help when you're spreading it on. But what I found out was happening is when I take these scrapers and they're metal, when I was going into my mud, into the pans, um, I was scraping the plastic off, which was putting it on my walls, and I was having to pluck and pick some of the stuff out. So here we go. This is my bathroom. I gutted it down to the bare studs, put a brand new tub in. Once again, had no idea what I was doing. Um, new floor, which, by the way, if you're gonna do a bathroom, if you're gonna do a room, put the floor in last. Another mistake, but hey, um, it cleans up okay. Putting the mud on, uh, what I bought was a tape that is a self-adhesive tape because once again, I was kind of afraid to approach this project. Not afraid because, well, quite frankly. This is the tape here. What it is is you peel the back of it off and it sticks to your wall. Here, let me get this off. Um, but I did get a really decent corner uh, uh, taping system. And this is it here. Um, not endorsed by anybody. This is just the kind of stuff that I grabbed. So I got this, which is really nice because when you do get to your corners, I don't know if you can see this, it's actually got a thick plastic piece right here. So the tape adheres to the wall, put your mud on, and you can do your inner and outer corners, preferably just the inside corners. That's up around your ceiling, that's around your corners. Um, for the outside corner, I got one of these plastic beads. It's right here. Um, I've been trying to cover it up. So, for that 
one I showed you, it, it does great along here, does great in the seams and across here. You can see I got it on a little thick. This I just finished putting on my third and final coat. That's why it's so wide across here. I used that final one. Um, I was getting a little upset because I couldn't get the tape to disappear. Once again, never having done it before. So what I'm finding out is once it dries, and I'm not sure if you can see that, that you can see the tape marks here and here. And what I was finding out is once the tape, or once the uh, mud, there you go, you can see it. Once the mud dried, that disappears. Not completely, but it does disappear. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> uh, got done sanding, a lot of dust. Get yourself a dust mask, a really good dust mask. Um, and you will spill mud on the floor as you're doing it. Um, once again, you can see. So when you're doing your corners and things, what I, I did is I was grabbing from the corner and scooping outward as I would go. I would put my um, spatula or trawl or whatever you want to call it. Um, I would put it into the sealer and I would roll a bead. Now the experts say get about half, get fill up your spatula about halfway. This is the compound that I used. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to come off backwards for you guys because it kind of looks like it is. It's um, USG's ultra lightweight sheet rock joint compound. Now there's two things. I bought another one because I was getting frustrated and this one is the normal Oh, good God, it's heavy. Okay, so this is the normal one here. It's an all-purpose joint compound. This bucket weighs probably about 60 pounds. I mean, it's pretty heavy, 50, 60 pounds. This ultralight, I realized why they call it ultralight, because it is lightweight. So I was thinking it wasn't covering up the way it should cover up. So I bought pretty much everything you can think of. I was buying uh, sandpaper for drywall, 80 grit to rough it down. I bought 120 screened um, sandpaper to sand off the bumps. When in actuality, here's my suggestion. I went and I had these already. It's a 400 grit and it's for an orbital sander. So I used this and it works like a dream. Um, it knocks down the high spots, it, it gets rid of the um, bumps and it helps smooth things down a lot easier. So what I did, there it is. I just bought one of these Velcroed hand sanders by 3M and sanding down my bumps seemed to work okay. Um, it does, a pretty decent job and minimal dust. You're gonna get a ton of dust on the floor. You're gonna get a bunch of dust, so wear a dust mask. Um, sorry I didn't actually start filming and show you how I was doing this, but I really didn't know what I was doing. So I decided to start this channel for people like me. Um, look at something, look at the experts, and that's, hey, if the experts were cheaper, we'd all pay for it, right? So I'm kind of a cheap guy. I do things myself. Got a spare piece of uh, drywall there that I'm using as a table. Um, Tool-wise, um, putting in my um, drywall itself, I use my Bosch um, drill and impact set. Pretty inexpensive. Um, for the bathroom, I'm using a trim. So there's my Bosch set. Um, but for my trim, I decided since it's a bathroom, I'm gonna go with the plastic trim. And I know that sounds a little hokey, but it's actually pretty nice stuff. So here's what it is. I don't know if you can see that. So it's got a design, it's got a three dimensional sp um, span to it, but it actually is plastic. 
I got myself a little uh, blade that I'm going to cut it with. This way, no moisture. I don't have to worry about anything like that. And here's my vanity out in the middle of my living room. So I've been living kind of in a pigsty for about a month now because I'm doing this all on my own. Um, so once again, I'll update, update you guys as to what's going on. But here it is in a nutshell. Installed the surround bathtub down to the stud walls. I rewired a exhaust fan light. I rewired this because I had old wiring in the house and it had to be updated. Put in a GFS outlet. So, and I, once again, I don't know what I'm doing. YouTube videos have helped me out tremendously, so I figured, hey, I'll give you guys the opportunity to see what I'm doing. Um, did all my plumbing myself, so hopefully the house doesn't uh, fall down around me. Great sharing time with you. Um, a few things, when you are using your trowels, um, like I said, these experts have their own ways of doing things. I'm going to grab a, my 4-inch real quick and just show you. So... When I uh, do my corners, what I do is I grab and come in here and then rock it. I'll try to get an angle view for you. So as I'm pulling, I'm walking it in. I'm, cl I'm closing off. So you, pu you, put, your big, you put your bead of um, mud across the edge of that. I go into the corner and once again as I start pulling it starts feeding and as it starts feeding it goes down and down and down and I bend it in and pull it out. Uh, I found that works out best for me, I'm not saying it'll work best for everybody else. When I do these edges you see how they're a little rough. So what I do, I'm trying to get the, uh, there it is, so I bend it slightly, put the weight here on the outside corner, put the pressure there and you can see the gap. Then rock it in just enough to touch and you can get rid of most of your high spots as you drag it along. And you can see how I've scraped most of that those high spots off give you a demonstration of this one right here that you can see well, pretty plain and simple right here so take your trawl put it on against your solid part of your wall and you can see there's a slight bend in there so pull it and then adjust your pull to what you're trying to knock off and then if it doesn't do it that time I'll just do it again. Pull. You can see it knocking it off there. And it'll clean it up, to scrape it off on your thing. The other thing I found about those plastic containers, um, just invest in the uh, metal ones. It might be a dollar more or something like that. But with the plastic ones, um, they're painted. And these paint chips flake off in the uh i don't know if you can see here, let's see if i can pick this up and show you so you can see there there where are they there those little paint chips in there so between pulling out chunks of plastic and then uh there's paint every time i scrape my trowel off on it it was causing me some issues so once again, save yourself some money. You don't need all the drywall sandpaper. Any normal sandpaper will do. I found the 400 works good for me. And I bought just a little small package of it. And as long as it's Velcroed back and you got yourself a vat of Velcro sander, then it works out real well. So my next project is going to be as soon as the bathroom's done. I bought new doors. Going to put new doors on. Um, I did do the living room. Once again, down to the bare walls, this had, I don't know what the guy was doing, but it had solid wood going across here and some funky cuts. 
I'll do a bra uh, like a picture um, thing to show you what things like before and after. But once again, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.